We're also celebrating, though, today, International Women's Day, and we are taking a closer look at the gender pay gap. And the stats are sobering here. Women earn 82 cents for every dollar that men make in the U.S. And the stats are even worse when you look at things globally. According to the World Economic Forum, women earn 68 cents a day for or 68 cents for every dollar earned by men. And it would likely take 136 years, 136 years to achieve Parity. Let's bring in Misty Higanis. She is U.S. Census Bureau Principal Economist. Misty, I have to say, you know, this morning I was looking at the numbers and, and it just it, it's incredible that we talk so much about the progress that's been made. And those numbers don't necessarily seem to point to that. To what extent have we seen women get, you know, fallen back here as a result of the pandemic? We know a lot of women have gone out of the workforce, but in terms of pay specifically, what have we seen? Yeah, so um, I mean, it's been, you know, it's always a challenge when you're looking at um, trying to create equality um, within an unequal system. And so um, today on International Women's Day, you know, it's just important to really recognize um, not only how much we have um, come, uh, but also how much um, work is still left to do. Um, and one thing that I really think is important to highlight today is that when we look at work in general, both paid and unpaid labor, um, it's important to really understand um, conceptually kind of how much effort women put forward in society and are not um, reimbursed for in the forms of, of a paid wage. So women on general work about a half an hour more per day than men uh, when you add together paid and unpaid work. Um, that's the equivalent over a year, you know, half an hour more of effort um, during the day, whether it's, uh, you know, making dinner or um, cleaning it might not seem like much, but that's the equivalent of about 40 hours of, um, or sorry, four weeks of 40 hour um, work uh, during a year that women are putting in almost more than a month. Um, you know, men have more paid time off than women and, um, you know, women are um, disproportionately working in unpaid uh, work with that they don't get paid for. And so, you know, this is the reality of, of society today. And I think it's just important to really um, acknowledge all of the work that women do contribute to society and all of the effort they put forward in our economy. And just drilling down into some of the different sectors, you note to us that the finance sector, the worst performing sector when it comes to closing the pay gap between men and women. I'm wondering why this is, if it's something structural, uh, just any reason why it might be concentrated in finance to a larger degree. Um, you know, I think there's lots of reasons um, that this happens. You know, there's um, there are cultural and structural um, norms within society that really drive um, areas of the economy that women go into and, and areas they choose not to. Um, and so I do think it does require a really uh, comprehensive um, analysis, if you will, um, to really understand what's going on with the dynamics. You know, we tell our children um, every day um, that they uh, or you know, we hope that we tell our children every day that they can be anything they want when they grow up. And, you know, I'm Gen Z and I was told that that it didn't matter that I was a girl. Um, and, you know, I think we really, uh, you know, want to focus on telling all of our children that they can be whatever they want when they grow up. But, you know, we as the adults in the room then have a responsibility to look at these structural um, dynamics that really don't allow women to engage in um, economic and paid um, work and activity in the same rate as men, whether it's in the finance sector or other sectors. And we really need to think about how can we shift those structural um, issues. I mean, how can we? That, that seems to be the question that we keep coming back to. What needs to change structurally? Right. Um, so, I, you know, I think there's a couple of um, areas that are relatively low hanging fruit that we can engage in as a society. Um, you know, one is we can um, ask men to um, contribute more in terms of unpaid labor and households um, so that women are able to more actively engage in paid employment. Um, we could reimburse uh, individuals who engage in care work, whether they're men or women, we can reimburse um, individuals for that that activity. Um, you know, another option is to really focus on a grander scale on the care economy and creating structures within the care economy that um, allow a little bit more freedom for our workers to be as productive as they, they can be.
We have to leave it there, but really appreciate you stopping by with those insights. Uh, Misty Hegenes, U.S. Census Bureau, Principal Economist.